Hey guys, Zane here with another One Take Review, and today I want to talk about the new Placebo album, Never Let Me Go. Never Let Me Go is the latest album from Placebo, as well as their first full-length album since 2013's Loud Like Love, which was hilariously hated upon when it came out. In fact, it kind of still is today. I mean, critics don't really like it, fans definitely don't like it, and generally speaking, a lot of people see it as Placebo's weakest effort. With such a big gap in between full-length releases and EP and I think it was 2016 that I don't think anybody, even the most diehard Placebo fans, cared about remotely, as well as some other big changes for the band, I don't think anyone was expecting the big Placebo comeback album to be anything worth checking out, but that ended up being kind of wrong. But first things first, there are some big changes with the band that I want to address, and that main big change is that Placebo are technically no longer a band, or at least not in the textbook or traditional sense of the word. Rather, Placebo is now a duo after the 2015 departure of drummer Steve Forrest. Placebo have actually cycled through a few drummers over the years, and most notably Steve Hewitt, who is on some of the band's most notable records and most notable efforts, who is also no longer in the band, and that's just it now for those uh, third member drummers. That's just a wrap on that role for the band. While this would undoubtedly and understandably lower some people's expectations, not having that extra punch of a third performer in Placebo, I don't think that any passion or any inspiration or any ability in terms of performance is lost here with the downsizing. Frontman Brian Molkel takes over percussion and makes use of some, some drum machines as well, which kind of proves that Steve Forrest, as talented as he was, wasn't exactly the most essential performer in the world. Considering that the exact opposite usually happens in these kind of situations where a band loses a member or a band gets cut down into a duo, it's really amazing that songs like Surrounded by Spies are as engaging and as analysis-ready as they actually are, especially when you're comparing them to Placebo's previous works. Now let me get into the actual album itself. The overall performances on Never Let Me Go feel slightly restrained. This could be, certainly, due to a production style that's very compressed from producer Adam Noble, but I don't think so. I actually feel it's kind of on the band themselves. I feel that the performances here are kind of held back just a little bit, and even in the more emotionally intense moments, or the moments that are meant to be a little more emotionally intense, like Happy Birthday in the Sky, I feel are just kind of a little too controlled for their own good. Of course, Placebo have always been a fairly collected band, even in their crazier moments, but Still, it just feels like it's maybe overdoing it a little bit here. But then again, I suppose any album, be it a placebo album or any other similar record, is better off being put together in a slightly overly clean way than a nowhere near clean enough way. I guess overall I'd prefer someone to deliver me a previously completed puzzle than a completed puzzle that also has other pieces from like 10 other different puzzles, so... Overall, I'm fine with it, I just think that there could have done with maybe a little bit more rawness here. Even with the flawlessness of virtually every concept that's presented here, Placebo do kind of hold themselves back, at least a little bit, but it's not really enough to drag down the album too much in terms of quality, but things could have definitely been kicked up a notch if there were just maybe a bit less self-control. The lyrical content throughout Never Let Me Go is generally pretty decent and mainly typical Placebo with maybe some more introspective and existential lyrics that maybe call back a little bit towards earlier records like Without You I'm Nothing, but overall it's about what you'd expect from the band. However, there are times here where the songwriting is absolutely atrocious. Tracks like Try a Little Harder and Hugs, which is spelt with a Z, which is both the worst and best thing about this album, feel almost amateurishly written and definitely don't feel like they were penned by two men that are now approaching their 50s and have been in the music industry since the late 90s. It's in this way that Never Let Me Go seems to be kind of confused either as to whether it wants to be one of the more mature placebo records, which is kind of an achievement in and of itself considering they're a fairly musically and lyrically mature band, or if it wants to be a bit more of a simple and less emotionally distressed version of what the band have done previously. I would personally be fine with either, but the record's indecision between the two is a very frustrating problem. This especially rings true when Placebo's lyrical abilities are definitely on display here throughout a couple of tracks, nothing in particular that's fantastic, but still, there's no denying that it's pretty consistent lyrically, it just so happens that there are a couple tracks here that 
make me wince a little bit and wonder why I'm even listening to this before it kicks back into what I'm expecting from the band, which is general greatness. Overall, Never Let Me Go is a surprisingly great and very well executed comeback album for Placebo, and one that was way better than anything I could have ever dreamt up. While there's no denying that the performances could have been a little more raw, a little more kind of just direct, and that the album does walk an awkward line between two very different phases of the band's career, I think it's kind of hard to fault this record, at least in most ways, which is why I'm going to say Never Let Me Go, it deserves four stars out of five. I didn't think I'd be giving it even three and a half stars, but here I am. So yeah, four stars out of five, this is a great comeback record, and even if I did come across maybe slightly harsh in this review, it's a great listen, and I highly recommend it. It's worth the hour or so to sit through. So yeah, four stars out of five, and with that being said, that's the end of this review, and I'll see you guys in the next one.